Come with me, Jake Turner, as I travel the back roads talking with corn and soybean experts about best practices in pest control, ag issues, and how growers can get more from every acre. All you need is a minute. In order to get maximum impact from crop protection products, you got to spend a little time calibrating your sprayer equipment. That's why I'm headed to Stanbury, Missouri, to meet with Jamie Boswell, a sprayer specialist for the Missouri John Deere commercial application dealer at Northwest Implement, to discuss best practices in sprayer calibration. Jamie, thanks for having us out here. It's my pleasure. Tell us, why is it so important for growers to properly calibrate their equipment, and what are they risking if they don't? Well, I want an even application coming out of the sprayer, and there's a lot of things that come into that. There's calibrations of ground speed, radar, if we've got radar, flow meter calibration, we'll check nozzle flow. Some things we can do ahead of season to ensure that we have an even application across the boom at different varying speeds. And what are some other things to take into account to ensure proper application? Things we're going to look at are ground speed. Uh, per the label of the product, we're going to look at application rates. We're going to look at nozzle spacing on the sprayer, nozzle flow, um, targeted droplet size, you know, make sure we've got the proper tip selection for, for the particle size of the droplets that we want. And you were talking about speed. You know, folks have a lot of ground to cover. How does it affect uh, the application if you go a little faster to get the job done quicker? Sure. Most of the machines today, as you speed up, the, the sprayer is going to ramp the pump up and try to put on more product. But the risk you can run of a continual uh, oversped application, if you will, is um, you can run into risks of either over applying or under applying. And obviously, if we over apply product, that's probably bad for the crop, or it could be. We could burn the crop. If we under apply, we run the risk of not getting enough on and therefore not getting a good kill on the, on the target weeds that we're after. And on the same side, uh, what about going slower? I mean, some of these landscapes are flat as pancakes, but some of them aren't. You gotta account for hills, you gotta account for waterways, ground conditions. Sure, the operator really needs to look at the different field conditions they're gonna have and, and think about the different ground speeds that they can travel at. As we slow down, we run the risk of, of our rates dropping off and falling down. We've got some fall safes in the sprayer, in the monitor, to lock that rate on, but we definitely don't want to continually over-apply, again, causing possibly crop damage. We re really want to look at the ground speed you're going to be able to travel in that given field and then make sure we've got the right tip selected. And then, what about variance? You're going from slow to fast. Just how big a variance can a particular nozzle tip handle? Generally speaking, you could have an 8 to 10 mile an hour range on a given tip. That's not all tips across the board, but generally speaking, that would be a, a fair statement. Um, and we've got tools, there's apps for, for smartphones, there's online apps where you can plug in things such as your spray rate, your ground speed, your nozzle spacing, uh, desired droplet size, et cetera, and then it'll, it'll tell you, you need to pick from these two or three different size nozzles, and they'll give you these different pressure ranges at those given speeds. So if I'm going five miles for a good stretch, and then I'm going 20, I may need to make a new selection. You might need to take a look at it. So applicators are coming to you just before spraying season for advice. What information do they need to have for you to properly advise them? The first piece of advice I would give them is come to me early, not the day they're going to the field. And bring Does that happen? Every time. <laughs> every time. Some, some things that I like to have them bring to me is the rates that they're going to be running, ground speeds that they want to run, uh, droplet size that they want to run, and then what the carrier is. We're either going to be spraying water or possibly liquid nitrogen. Those are all pieces of input that I can put into my monitor and calculate to make sure I'm going to have a good, even application. And when people are changing over from one crop to another, what are some things they have to take into account? Uh, be that's really become a big issue the last couple years as we throw more product into the mixes. It's not one product that works for all crops. We're, we're switching in our area from corn to beans, and it's imperative that we get them rinsed out good. Not just rinsing the tank out, we need to flush agitation lines, eductor lines, all the boom lines. So it's very imperative that we get those rinsed out. And, and possibly even use an agent to help clean that out. And specifically what happens if you don't? Well, if I'm spraying corn chemical today and I rinse out and go to bean chemical and I didn't get it cleaned out, I'm probably going to burn your beans and you won't be happy with me. And what about changing operators? Changing operators, and that happens a lot. Uh, it's a good idea, you know, don't assume that the last guy that ran the sprayer had it set right. Go back through some of your calibrations, your flow meter calibration, check some of those settings in the display, make sure the rate's set on the rate that you want to be on. Do a visual of the machine, walk around, make sure that a valve didn't get turned, check your screens. Uh, just do a good walk around the machine before you get in it. It'll save you headaches down the road. 
And what other advice would you offer to applicators in general? Probably the best piece of advice I would give an applicator is prior to application season, be it fall or spring, get the machine out, let's put some water on it, which is safe for the environment, let's go out on some grass or, or the driveway here, and let's run some water through it, let's do some of these calibrations, check the flow of the nozzles, you know, make sure our nozzles are all spraying evenly, and do that ahead of time. It works a lot better with water when you're not under pressure than being setting in the field trying to do it with a, with a load of product on where you might be wasting product. Would you demonstrate using some water to test for us? I'd be happy to. I'll have Mitch fire the machine up and we'll take it outside. Jamie, again, the reason why we want to come out here and spray water through the machine is? I like to use water for calibrating the machines ahead of season. Um, water is good for the environment. You can go out and spray it on a pasture. We're out here in the lot today, um, but that way we don't run into any contamination with crop protection products before we go to the field for real. So we're going to kick the sprayer on here if you're ready. In this way, we make sure everything's operating properly, but we don't waste any chemicals or receive any damage from products. Exactly. Jamie, thanks so much for sharing best practices like this and all your knowledge today. It was my pleasure. Greatly appreciated. As Jamie said, being proactive, getting the information your consultant needs to advise you, and properly calibrating your equipment well in advance of application season, and monitoring and adjusting for any conditions that would cause a variance in your application will yield the best results when applying your crop protection products. This is Jake Turner reminding you to be safe out there. See you down the road when you have a minute.